Welcome back to the Bray and Ethan podcast, episode 122. Ethan, and you're over there today. You uh, jump to jump ship over to the other side of the desk. In between you and, or uh, well, in between the guests, and then you on the other side. Yeah. Beautiful new studios here. We'll be here for the next little while. So yep. exactly, we'll yep. be here, and of course, it is all thanks to Skin Bro, Hat Locker, and Cheetah Clothing. Uh, Skin Bro, you can use code Brian Ethan twenty for twenty percent off at skinbro.com and of course get the essentials kit for fifty four ninety nine hat locker. Use that same code for twenty percent off at hatlocker.com.au and of course cheetah clothing. It's getting cold. Get your cheetah jumpers. It is, yeah. Now uh South Fremantle, not sure if you've been paying attention, but they've been flying of like yep. Bray uh, Upper top, waffle. equal top. Yep. Our guest has been a key reason for that. Jaron Kyle, welcome. Oh, thanks for having me, boys. Now you just you went to Cedar just like us, discovered it last night. So three Cedar alumni in the Big. building. <laughs> How's that? Um, yeah, well, I actually didn't do the year eleven and twelve Cedar course. I graduated from Corpus Christi College okay. and then I did the diploma. Diploma. Um, yes. Because I didn't do ATAR, so I needed to do the diploma to go into university. So that was great. It was a one year course, um, and I met a lot of good people there um, and made a lot of good connections. Um, so yeah, I reckon it was a really good experience uh, that one. Okay, so yeah, we didn't do that, but we obviously no. went to the Year 11 and, and 12 program. So uh, Cedar, but not Cedar, if that makes sense, between, in the building today. Yeah, in between, yeah. Yeah, um, involved in the Tri Long Wheel Coaching Academy. So using your coaching skills, I guess, from that to your advantage or some yeah. Of skills? Um, yeah, you do develop a lot of things doing those coaching um, courses, especially with Troy, who's a really great guy. Um, and it's good because I sort of got to get a grasp um, of coaching of – Boys from, you know, 10 years old up to 16 years old trying to um, get a first crack in Colts. So, um, yeah, it was good to see how um, over the grades, how those boys develop um, and how I can help along the way. And your dad, 150 plus games of yeah. AFL. When when guests come in who, whose family has done well, we don't like to make it about the family, we like to make it about the guests. But 150 games, our uncle premiership player at Port Adelaide. Probably a question you've been asked so many times, countless times, but does the father-son... Uh, at the Dockers across your mind? Uh, of course, but, um, you know, right now just sort of trying to focus on um, getting consistent games at South Fremantle and building, um, you know, my career from there. Um, I've only played two games at South Fremantle so far, so just sort of thinking it one week at a time at the moment. How many times have you been asked that question? <laughs> um, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I, no, it's, hard, it's hard to say. It's hard to say. A lot of people sort of ask about... Um, your, your, your dad and your uncle and um, if that puts any pressure on you and it sort of doesn't because they're, they're very good with that um, and they sort of allow me just to play my football especially my dad um, my uncle coaches in South Australia for Port so I only speak to him over the phone or when he's here in Perth but um, yeah you know it's, it's, it's good it's good because um, you know I get to learn new things obviously he's got all the experience and whatnot. Um so it gives me a lot of good advice and I sort of chose to try to take it on board. Yep. Well, you're also part or well, around the Dockers as a youngster being in the Stephen Hill squad in the NJ as well. Yeah. Good fun. Yeah, that was great. Um, coached by Roger Hayden um, and when I first got there, Tendai Mazongu. And there's a lot of good boys that um, was in that squad, especially at South Fremantle. We had guys like Chase Bourne and then uh, one that comes to mind at West Perth, Jasper Scaife was there as well. Yep. Um, and he looks like he's in pretty good form. So Jesse Motloff, I think, might have been. Yeah, Jesse Motloff well, was so. in there. Yep. Yeah. Well, Freo City Junior Footy Club to South Freo making a Colts debut back in 2022. What's the journey been to date with a bit of ammo as at Winnicott as well? Yeah. Um, well, Freo City was great. We had um, we actually had guys playing for us like Chase. Steely Green was there as yeah. well, who's at Richmond now. Um, Rowan O'Hare is a league footballer at South Fremantle. Um, so that was a pretty good squad, pretty tight group as well. Um, and we all went to South together in the same age group. Um but I was a bit of a late developer, so my first Colts year, I actually didn't get a game, and I was on the rookie squad. Right. Um, There's a rookie was, squad for Colts. Yeah. So oh. they, they they assign eight boys um, who aren't quite on the list, but um, it's it's just a train on essentially. Right. Okay. Um, so I was a part of that, being I was quite small, very skinny. Yep. Um, but I was lucky enough to stay on the list, um, and then my second Colts year, I really try to just have a massive preseason, put a lot of work in. Um, and I was lucky enough to be the vice captain that year and then made my debut round one in, I think it was 2021. 
2022. Yeah. 2022. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And family connection to East Frio. So it was a bit controversial, I guess, going against that tradition with South. Yeah. Maybe didn't fit well with nah, some family members. Nah, dad doesn't really like dabble that much into supporting a waffle team, especially because he played for Swan Districts later in his career. Um, so he just sort of supports me as I go. But yeah, it was funny. I've been asked why I didn't join East Fremantle. Um, and to be honest, I didn't even know that was an option. So I just went with the zone straight to South Mantle and I couldn't be more glad, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. And we know you like your travelling. We'll touch on that a bit later. But uh, that came hand in hand with footy at, uh, with the trip to Darwin with South Frio. Yeah. Was that your sort of first taste for the league stuff unofficially? Yeah, it was. And that was really cool. Um, I was actually the Medi sub for that game. So I came in uh, late in the third quarter. But um, it was really cool. We played uh, like some names, like Mitch Robinson was in that um, yeah, Darwin squad. Yeah, they had a good side. Yeah, they did. Yeah. Um, and we played quite a young side as well, just sort of experimenting what um, talent we had coming through, yeah. which we um, it seems that we do have a lot of good young players coming through um, our South Fremantle side, which is, uh, yeah, I'm pretty keen to see how that goes in the future. Was that an all-star side that they... It out? was, yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. How was the trip off the field? Darwin. That was great. It was good fun. The <laughs> Did nightlife. Did you spend a week there? No, nah, it was just over the weekend. Okay. So um, the nightlife in Darwin was actually <laughs> way better than I expected. And it was funny because I was stupid enough to leave my wallet on the plane yep. on the way in. So I had to, that Saturday night, I had to go back to the airport. And I was lucky enough that they actually did find my wallet, um, picked it up, went all the way back out. It was a bit of an effort, but well worth it. You need your ID. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For that nightlife. Yeah. Yeah. Well, finding out you'd been making the trip to Joondalup to debut, a tough place to win, probably one of the toughest road trips, I guess, there is in waffle footy as well. But how were the nerves, especially, I guess, with a bit of media attention as well? Yeah. Um, no, I can't. Yeah. You know, I had, I had some mates sending me some things um, and they were just getting into me a bit. But, you know, I wasn't too nervous. I was more excited coming in. Um, and it's a long way away, and it was a massive ground, and that's what I liked about it uh, at Joondalup. It's really big, yeah. and that sort of suits my game, so I like to run, um, and being now I moved from the wing to the half forward, I sort of, I'm open to the ground a bit, so yeah. I don't have to stand that on, on the tracks of the wing, and um, yeah, I can sort of move around and just run around as I please, so I reckon it was a really good ground for me to debut on. And how did you find out? Because you had some really good form in the Waffle, some 20-plus disposal games. So did you sort of feel it coming? Yeah, well, I knew that – well, I, I started the year well um, and we had a buy round two where we played um, the Colts in a, like a mixed scratchy as well just so we didn't lose any form and I played well in that too. So I was sort of just I didn't really, – I didn't really know, but I was sort of just hoping that maybe the coaches had seen um, and might back me in, which they I was fortunate enough they did. Um, and Todd just came up to me on the Thursday night and was like, well done, mate, congrats, you're in. And, um, yeah, I was pretty stoked for that to happen. The trip to Joondalup, I mean, I know it's an afternoon game, but you probably have to leave pretty early. So that probably helps not having to wait around mm. a bit. Mm. Yeah, so I woke up, did my thing, usual routine, um, prep, and uh, yeah, I was straight there. I tried to get there early to watch the reserves as well, um, just because I like watching the boys play, seeing who plays well. And um, we're one big club as well, so it's good to get around them. Um, so I wanted to get there, watch that, um, and go from there. Obviously, having some help around you, you, you probably credit your teammates, but did you expect to do so well in debut? And as mentioned, the, the tough road trip, but you guys won. So any celebrations that night, Saturday night after debut? Uh, yeah, we, um, I went to the left bank with um, one of my mates from work after that. Um, and just it was, a, it was a small celebration, but no, nah, it was a really good win. Um, and, you know... It's a real, it's a real privilege to play amongst guys like Hayden Schloith, Matthew Parker, Isaiah Winder, um, and even like Dylan Mann, who've all been on AFL lists, and there's probably more at the club. Um, but just to get be around those people and um, experience playing with them is really good, and I reckon it's a bit, real big um, learning curve for me as well. The only downside is you you've kicked a point in your first two league games, yeah. so that accuracy is something you want to rectify. Yeah. Probably the only negative. Yeah, well, I'm not too bad in front of goals. Like in the reserves, I kicked a couple goals. Um, so my confidence was up, but that league, the one in the league game, I should have I nailed really. I should have mm. nailed that one. <laughs> well, you're only 20 and probably like a lot of the guys coming through at the moment at South. There is a big young group coming through. So are you boys looking forward to, I guess, potentially taking this club forward in yeah. a couple of years' time and yeah. be, being the leaders yeah. in five years' time? Yeah, well, you know, it's a long way away. Yeah. Um, 
and we're sort of just trying to win now. But um, it is it is exciting to look forward to, um, you know, especially being how tight our group is yeah. um, at South Fremantle Football Club. Um, you know, we got myself, Rowan, Chase, Ashton Ferreira, who's been on this yes. podcast before. Yeah. Glad you um, the Ferrari. Yeah. yeah, the Ferrari. Um, so good. Uh, yeah, a lot of young talent that um, you know, I think can take uh, the South Fremantle Football Club forward. And you know, I think it's exciting times. You boys must run a mark together because I see some stories of Caden Harbour's Instagram story <laughs> after games, and I'm like, man, oh, like, him, Aaron what Dray, is going Aaron, on? Aaron Drage as well uh, around the club. <laughs> like, seriously. Yeah. No, it's a it's a tight group and um, good, uh, good culture. Um, all, all, all fun and games with us um, and yeah we just like to you know not make it too much about football always football 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 we try to have a bit of fun outside as well um, make sure we're all real good mates outside of actually playing football yeah and the media campaign has been joined the fight back and you guys are living up to Join that so far back. this season so <laughs> yeah uh, but personally like what are the goals now for you obviously to stay in the team mm-hmm. um, with some big games coming up such as the WA Day Derby that's yep. always a huge game on the calendar but other than that, what's on your mind, I guess, now that you're third on the ladder? Uh, well, we want to stay in the top five for sure. Um, that's a big goal, especially that we didn't actually play finals last year. So playing finals would be huge for us um, and hopefully forward from there. But, yeah, like you said, just trying to stay in the team one game at a time, really focus on um, my routine, my preparation, and um, just focus on playing the best footy I can possibly play. Yeah, for sure. Well, um you clearly love your travelling, like we said earlier, and a big basketball fan too, it seems. Uh, yes. What do you love more, your beloved Michael Jordan or your photography? I had noticed you had a little uh, side hustle yeah. photography account in your Instagram bio. Did I? Oh, the film by Jaron, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, no, yeah, I've got a little film camera at home, so I, uh, I like taking a couple of photos, especially when I'm down south in Dunsborough. Um, yeah. I, I bring it there and we sort of just muck around, take a couple of photos. Um, so it's just a bit of fun. <laughs> but, yeah, no, I do love my basketball. Michael Jordan is the GOAT. Um, have you been to an NBA game? I have. I was, I was lucky enough to um, go to a two games when I was travelling in Los Angeles um, and in San Fran. I went to the Golden State Warriors versus the Pelicans and uh, the Golden State Warriors versus the Lakers. Right. Which was a pretty big game to go to. It was pretty cool. Steph Curry you playing or was he injured? He was playing. This was a couple of years back. This would have been maybe in 2018 or 2019. I actually think Clay Thompson had like 10 threes in a row that game and set a record. And that was before he did his ACL. That was before he did his ACL, yeah, yeah unfortunately. So the floor is yours. People say uh, LeBron is better than Michael Jordan. <laughs> Your response? No, 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 he's not. Um, Michael Jordan is better. Uh, LeBron is a great player, respectively, but, um, you know, Michael Jordan is just uh, him. Yep. Yeah. him. Which is, I guess, him. interesting because <laughs> the people who say LeBron is better are obviously people around like our age who have watched yeah, him and were alive him. when yeah. Jordan yeah. played. But clearly, I mean, you've probably watched a lot of highlights, stats. Yeah, stats. And uh, cha- I think championships is the main thing. You mm. can't really go 6-0 and and not be um, the greatest of all time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And getting an MVP in all those Exa- finals Exactly well. right, exactly right. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely not wrong. I'm a big basketball fan. Definitely not wrong. Well, we'll move on to the uh, Instagram Q and As you said, you were looking forward to these uh, off. <laughs> Start off with Taj Longmuir, favorite fantasy footy member. Wow, is this like in your team or like no, in your fantasy? No, group? that's a, that's it's the fantasy group. Yeah, um, it'd it'd be hard to go past my brother, um, Bo, who's who's obviously a great fantasy player as well. Um, but obviously I live with him and he's my brother, so he's my favorite of the of the crew. <laughs> Um, and the rest, you know, uh, are good lads, but get under my skin from time to time. <laughs> <laughs> Jai Conican, how has gaining a sport and business diploma assisted in making your league debut? Massive, <laughs> massive if you ask. That's a massive question. Visuals. Yeah. Um, wow. I don't know. We, um, yeah, we did a lot of work with the Fremantle Football Club, um, which was good. So we, we did a bit of work around AFL footballers um, and how they go about things like we did uh, like we actually worked with the club, um, so I reckon being able to do that um, helped me sort of just grasp a bit of maturity, especially coming into a league side. Um, I don't know about how it's helped me playing, but <laughs> certainly helped my character. Yeah, probably not on your mind when you're trying to lace out something yeah. on the field, but <laughs> hey, it all it all helps. Uh, here we go, Ashton Ferreira. Uh, who's the most annoying teammate at the club? 
also any harm in getting a hard ball <laughs> He told me he was going to ask this question. Um, <laughs> that's a good question. There's no real annoying play people at the club. Um, Ashy gets under my skin, so he, he'd be up there. I reckon, who else? Ed Graham. Yep. Ed, Gra- Ed Graham's a funny one. Um, Chase Bourne, Liam Brandis gets under my skin every now and then. Surely Caden Harbour. Caden Harbour. Caden Harbour. No, everyone, everyone at the club's really good lads though, so um, there's no real annoying bloke at all, but um, no, uh, not a fan of hardball gets. <laughs> Keep yeah, you on the outside there. Yeah, outside. Caden <laughs> Harbour, what is Benny's like? Oh, it's great. Um, massive sponsor of the club. Um, Really? Yeah, it's a, it's a bigger sponsor, so they're always, um, whenever we have club functions upstairs, um, they're always catering for us, um, and they allow us to skip the line whenever we want to go out, so it's sort of the, where we, if, if, if all the boys are going to go out after a game, it's um, sort, of, sort of where we all meet up, so yeah, it's a great strictly spot. strictly no other clubs. Yeah, <laughs> got to look, look after the sponsors. Yeah. Yeah, well, we played up at um, Ocean Ridge last week, and walked up to the sort of pavilion, and there's a sign with the vault. <laughs> and then I'm like, no way, these guys are sponsored by the vault. And then no. about five minutes later, I realized there's another sign that says bar one. Mm. So they're sponsored by two nightclubs. Wow. So that means the guys are pretty much on every Saturday night yeah, wow. on Ocean Ridge. Wow, that's a like Would be nice. Club, yep. <laughs> uh, Cody Leggett from the Sharks. <laughs> uh, do you work with him? I do. He's, yeah, he's, the, he's the boss at the pub. Okay, well, yeah. here you go. How many time zones are in Australia? <sighs> He thinks he's funny. I'll give a bit of background to this one. Um, we were making a quiz night yep. and um, we were sort of just trying to make a couple questions here and there and, an e- and a couple easy ones. So this was in the general knowledge um, section and he goes, oh, how about this one? How many time zones time zone in Australia? And I was like, oh, that's a good one. And obviously he's talking about Australian Western Standard Time yeah, and whatnot. East. And I go, I don't know, maybe like 80? <laughs> thinking, thinking he's talking about the arcade. <laughs> and he just found that so funny. He found that very funny. And it's a bit embarrassing, uh, but yeah, <laughs> well, he found that quite funny. Cody says again, <laughs> are you overpaid for the minimal work you do at your workplace? <laughs> no, um, no. I paid quite fairly. And I think I, we, what we like to say between me, Cody, and um, Austin Ball, who's also an East Fremantle footballer, who's played a couple of league games, he works there with us as well, is that uh, I do carry the boats mm. at the pub. That's what he said. I'd love to be in like the workplace before the WA Day Derby. Yeah, a bit of tension, especially because um at the pub. Head there on a Sunday, are they? Yeah, they all, all the all the locals as well at the pub that drink there, like they really love the waffle. Yeah. So they get into us a bit, especially if we lose a bad game. So when Cody and the East Fremantle Football Club lost to West Coast, Ooh. they were getting right into him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Lucas dot yo. Is it true you actually got banned from Thailand after your trip last year? Uh, no, that's not true, but I don't think I will be going back. <laughs> <laughs> just a one trip. Yeah, just one a one time. One time. Mitch Goody. Brady. Rumour has it, Jaron believes he has Cody Leggett in his back pocket. Can we confirm? Well, we will be playing on... If I do play in that league game against East Fremantle, we will be playing on opposite sides of the ground, but um, certainly I will make an effort to go and get into him. Um, as soon as I get on the field, I reckon I'll run up to him, give him a little push and shove, see how he reacts, <laughs> see if I can get under his skin. But <laughs> I don't know about back pocket. He's a pretty good player. Mm, keep the bag on the weekend. Yeah, kick four. Mm. Seth underscore Connor. Are you only tall because you took an uh, ample <laughs> amount of growth hormones? <laughs> no, that's not true. Um, I was lucky enough to get my dad's genetics. <laughs> that's that's not true. Is that right? Ample? Am- what, yeah, ample, yeah, just like means a lot. Right? Yeah, yeah. So, B Dodd, well, former docker. Uh, any danger you can start pulling your weight out at work? Weight out at work. <laughs> Worst worker at Franklin's Tavern by far. Your oh, response? That's wow, a big call. wow, Brad Dodd. Um, interesting. He's actually one of the owners of the pub as well. So, <laughs> interesting for him to put his input in there. Um, I think I don't know about the worst. I, I dare say I put my fair my fair share of input into that pub. Um, yeah. But that hurts. Yeah. Sorry, Dottie. I'll be better. How do you, uh, how are the balance between work and staff amount of training? And because about being a full time, well, semi full time footballer, yeah. it's a tough gig. Yeah. We're at uni as well at Notre Dame doing a commerce degree. But mm. um, no, nah, work's good. It's pretty um, casual. Um, and you uh, sort of work there three times a week from 
nine to four. Um, so yeah, no, nah, it's a really good place to be at just while I am playing footy and I'm at uni. Yeah, especially if you hate winning, those Waffle fans can stop giving oh, you yeah. a stick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Mickey Blue, who would win in a fight, Josh or Matt Carr? Wow, what a question. Um, usually on the, they're on the same team. Um, so I've actually, I'm actually not sure. I've never seen them scrap against each other, but I'm sure they have in their um, childhood years. Dad is the bigger, the bigger bloke, being 190 centimetres. Josh is only 178, I think. So I've got, I'm going to have to back the old man in there. There's quite a few that have come through late. Uh, Kobe Lacra. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about SBA. Wow. That was, um, <laughs> that was a competition, a backyard basketball competition that we ran, and it was very serious. It was a very serious backyard. There was about 10 people involved, 2v2. Um, full fixtures, full finals, and um, yeah, that's funny. It, it, no, it was actually good, good fun. Kobe Lacroix being um, son of Brent as well, mm. who's related to Mark, so he's got a yep. good footy background too. He also asks, is your favourite song Mary Had a Little Lamb? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Lucas Alley, I believe it is, our favourite South Mantle trainer and why? Repeat that one. Favourite trainer and Favorite why? Favourite trainer. Wow. Um Hmm, that's a good question. I don't have a favourite trainer. I probably the whole team. Yeah, the whole they're, they're all they're all good. They all, they all do their job. Um, I mean, is there six? Or something? I don't know. There's a lot. There's a there's a lot. We've got our main trainers, yeah. um, Peter and Reese, and then there's a lot of the younger girls that do the um, you know the actual physio stuff as well. I yeah. think there's six of them in there. But a favourite trainer of mine actually is Josh Kovacs. Um, he runs his business, Essential Fitness, who's trained myself. Steely Green and he's training um, Haki Harcourt as well, who's a South Mental footballer. And he's a really good guy. So, um, yeah. Shout out. Uh, a couple more. Taj Lot Long Muir. Uh, hey, Jaron Taj here. I mean, we, we said that before. <laughs> big but uh, big fan. Your debut was great to watch. Favourite junior football moment? <laughs> mm, um, we won a grand final in year eight. That was pretty cool. Um, in year nine, not a favourite grand, not a fa- favourite junior football moment, but um, in year nine, we were in the grand final and we had Jack Williams, who's an Eagles player now, kick a goal to win the game with 40 seconds to go. That was a bit of a heartbreak, but um, another big moment was I watched in year 12 or year 11, um, I, was on the far, I was on the far wing and I've seen one of our players, his name was Graham, very talented footballer, um, and he's gone up for this mark and he's sat on this bloke's shoulders for, I, I kid you not, I reckon three seconds he was up there for. And he's sitting there on this <laughs> so guy's let, let, shoulders. Let's compare this to Jamie Elliott on Anzac. I, I almost reckon it was better. He's actually yeah. jumped up on this guy's shoulders and he's sitting there. And he's, it's like, it was like, the, I, I was in awe. It was, <laughs> yeah. I was like watching Jeremy Howe against that, that hangar against yes, Sydney. Yes. And he just sat there for a yep. million years taking this massive mark. And it was, wow. It, it, the, the roar from the crowd, the, the, the little crowd we had at Free City Dockers was was big. <laughs> we need some vision, but I don't know if that was cool. <laughs> well, what about you? What about your mark? But, um, not yours, but I from say, um, I'm taking the scream over. <laughs> from Warwick Junior Footy Club. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that was about 15, 20 years ago. Yeah. This guy, like in the goal square, goes up and just takes like a one, literally in his palm, takes a hanger, and it was corn. It was on featured on, on the, the Sunday show. on the Footy Show. Yeah. yeah. Last Q and A from Austin ninety nine Ball. Are the rumors true? You take Fridays off for work because you have footy on Saturday. <laughs> um, technically, I have uni, but that rumor is true. I sort of don't like to do any heavy cart and lifting, any forklift work at uh, at the pub. So I do take the, the Friday off to get into my routine and preparation. That is a true rumor. That's yeah. understandable. Yeah, like it's waffle footy. Yeah, that's a true rumor. Well, that's it. Yep, all the late ones have come in. I saw that uh, South Frio put it on their story probably mm-hmm. like half an hour before we started recording. Yep. So there was, I knew <laughs> hey, there was definitely going to be late ones. That delay in. we had proved wonders. Yeah, exactly. We did go. take us a bit to get into the studio this morning. Um, all right, we'll move on to the quiz. Now, the Trinity boys of late have been just topping Firing, the leaderboard. Yeah. 12 and 11 uh, for Adam DeMassey and Luke Costella uh, right up the top. Uh, but South Fremantle was... I'm just this trying to get uh, last one. year because I think Ashton yeah. Ferrer did pretty well. We can probably he compare did. it to he, that. Yeah, he got 12 last year. He was joint yep. top. So we'll, uh, we'll shoot for the stars with him. Yep. Uh, same, so, same question as always. Okay. Hopefully you've done your homework. <laughs> I, don't, I haven't, so <laughs> coming in blind. What is your height and weight on the Waffle website? 
I know this, uh, 191 centimetres, and I think it has me down as 78 kilos. Correct. Right. Cool. Is that legitimately correct? That is correct. Yep. Yeah. Really? Yeah. That is correct. One oh. from one. Question number two. How many disposals did you have on league debut? Um, we never know because the Waffle app tends to update itself, but I think it was 17. Correct. Cool. According to the website. There we go. Two. Question number three. You had the second most amount of marks on the ground in this game. How many marks did you have? On on debut? Mm. Yeah, second most on the ground. Wow. Um, You're only just realising that. <laughs> I don't know, maybe eight? Bang! Yes. Wow! <laughs> Toby McQuilkin had nine. Yeah. Yep. So, not bad. What did he score on the quiz last year, by the way? I think it was low. Yeah, uh, sorry, Jay, it was no good. Anything. I'm just getting. I reckon he got eight. Yeah, it was... Uh, I would guess. It was... Below par. Okay. <laughs> but we are three from three. Three, yeah. Okay. Question number four. Good start. Name the winning margin from the debut. Oh. This one stumps people because they just remember the, the win, win or loss. I reckon we won, it, it would have been by near three goals because it came down to the wire with about 10 minutes ago. Um, 19 points. 18. Oh. We'd that love hurts. to pay a point. Money. We'd love to pay a point, but that I hurts. can just for consistency. Oh. For sure. <laughs> that does hurt. As soon as you said three goals, I was like, oop, they're on the other. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, obviously, if you think three goals, you're never going to go bang on. Yeah, on 18. Gonna go, yeah. Gonna yeah. It's going to be a point. 17. I was thinking they yeah. tossing up 17 on 19. <laughs> uh, question number five. True or false, the number 24 jersey you wore on debut didn't have a 23 or 25 teammate in the same game. So true or false? Didn't have someone up or below yeah, your you locker in that from that game. <laughs> um, true. Correct. Come on. Closest teammate was Turnbull with twenty six in that game. Now, why have you been sharing? Why did you share twenty four with Luke Polston? And then so you played two games yeah, and you've so, won two different yeah. numbers. <laughs> so I actually am forty seven. Um, but because it was the Anzac Day game, they only ordered so many jerseys. Right. And having Polston being, he was suspended that round. Um, I sort of just had to wear his jersey. Mm. Um, because they didn't have nice. it in the forty seven. Yeah. Yeah. What the bad? What the bad man Luke Polson do? <laughs> I I think it was a dangerous tackle. Nah. I think it was a dangerous tackle. Stiff, but I think it was a dangerous tackle. Right. He's been doing well though. Yeah, he has. Good good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Where did he go? Cadgooly. Yes, he did. Yeah. Down up there. So yeah, yeah four no, from he's five. A, yeah. He's a really good asset to the, to us. Yeah. Four from five. Question number six. In your South Reserves career, you've kicked the exact same number of goals and behinds personally. What's the number? Um, this is going to be a wild guess. How many ga- how many games have I played? Ah, uh, good question. I'll try and find that. <laughs> no, it's, it's, near. it's valid if I find that. Um, you have played reserves games. Fourteen. Okay, I'm going to back in twelve. Twelve goals. Incorrect. No. It was seven. So seven, seven goals. goals seven okay. behinds. Okay. Four from six. six. There we go. Question number seven. Your dad played 162 AFL games. How many of these were at St. Kilda? Sure. It's in the 20s. Yeah. Um, we'll give you that. But, you know. 21? 20, 28. 28. Oh, that was a nice family. No, no, no. That, was, that was just me copying you. No, I, I know he's played 163 games. Didn't know how many played for St. Kilda. He was on Collingwood's list as well. He I was, saw. yeah. Yeah, which is pretty cool. We are four, four from seven. seven. Question number eight. Time to step up. Yep. So, versing Subiaco this weekend, mm-hmm. out of the last five games played between the two sides in the league, how many have South won out of five? Okay. Um, I'm going to back us in, but not too heavily. I'm going to go three out of five. Two, two out of five. No. Just one off again. So, yeah. Four from eight. I really need to step up here. Yeah, I started well. Been, been pretty yeah, even between the two sides since the 21 grand final in yep. between yep. Alpes. So, yeah, we've sort of... We've had a... We've had a lull. We've had a lull. In the middle. <laughs> Question number nine. From 28 matches for East Fremantle Cricket Club, what was your highest batting score? <laughs> um, I reckon I... I didn't crack 60. I hope. I... I reckon it's 58. 59. Are you serious? Oh, my God. So close. 
So oh, <laughs> looking at, I was looking at the stats from that season. You had a little bit of a nice form going on. I think yeah. it was 47. The I'm, actually a ter- I'm actually a terrible batsman as well. Like, I'm shocking with a stick. How, um, how long ago was this? This 59? was not this year. It was the season before. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, but, yeah, I was fortunate enough just to be versing a bunch of village cricketers um, and a couple of pies were coming at me, so I was able to play a few shots here and there. Nice. <laughs> Probably didn't have the patience to get to 159. Yeah. <laughs> what was the dismissal? Can you remember? No, nah, well, it was um, the, the day finished. I was, oh. bat- I was batting late oh. the day finished. I swear it didn't say 59. Maybe it did. I don't know, but I swear it just said 59. Yeah. Who yeah, knows? Oh, four four from nine. Four. I'd love to be able to pay these, but I can't, I can't really. <laughs> Up to nine though, so five points up okay. for grabs. This will test, I guess, your junior. Yeah, I don't mind this question. Your junior heritage or trivia. Uh, what year did your junior club change their name from Fremantle Hawks to Fremantle City Dockers? So five points if you bang on, four points within three, three within five, two within ten, and a point for anything outside of that. Okay, it was when I was young because there's a photo of me in the Hawks kit. Um, but I don't know when that would have been. I'm going to go, I reckon the year we changed was 2010. Bang! Oh, we finished it on high. Nine. Taking us to nine points. Come it was on. 2010. Come on. So, semi-recent, I guess, in yeah. history terms. But yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, you're on nine. So, that's more than half. That's a big. Nine out of 14. Yeah, that's a big. Unfortunately, big, yeah. from last year, Ashton still has the wood on you. Uh, yes. But you beat Toby. I'm confident you beat Toby. I reckon he got... Like six point yeah. five or seven or something. <laughs> yeah, no, Ashton, yeah, Ashton, Ashton, Ashton would have done his research too. He yeah. would have done his homework, knowing yeah. him. But I'm right in saying he's a bit of a ATAR sort of operator. Is he? Was that wow. my right? Well, did, did he get a good a ATAR? Nerd, footy head. Did he yeah. get a good uh, ATAR score? Was that him? Gee, testing the memory. Um, I don't know. He went to a manual. Yeah. So mm. that was a pretty switched on fella. Um, where are we? Trying to find. Yeah, Toby oh. got six. Yeah. So yep, we, we, there you we go. covered him. Nine <laughs> is pretty good. Isn't Bragging it? your rights. Yeah. yeah. We'll hold that over him. Yeah. yeah. But you yeah, can't get it over Ashton, unfortunately. No. Unfortunately. That's okay. Oh, well. Um, <laughs> of course, the episode is all thanks to Skinbro, Hat Locker, and Cheetah Clothing. Their links will be in the show notes below with uh, the discount codes as well, Ethan. And if you're listening on Spotify or Apple, you can, of course, head over to YouTube and watch the visual, vice versa as well. And subscribe five star rating a like would be very very nice it would be well. jaron's gonna do that as soon as he leaves the studio exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he will be yep uh but jaron thanks uh for coming on and i guess at the time of recording best luck for subiaka i think the by the time this comes out you'll be going into the wa day derby so best of luck for the sharks good as well. perfect thanks for having me boys